we want more return to the question of how planets are formed. In the video I did on the system that was ruled by chaos and order, we saw a system that had many sub-Neptune class planets and wondered how they might have formed and why their locations did not match the conventional theory. In a new piece of research published, astronomers have attempted to link data from different surveys and come to the rather remarkable conclusion that these sub-Neptune class worlds can have their atmosphere stripped to become giant Earths. Let's dive in and find out what else this analysis might tell us. The largest planets we find are mostly composed of gas and ices like hydrogen, helium, water, ammonia and so forth. It is believed that at their heart there is a rocky core under extreme pressure. Astronomers have speculated that if a giant planet was subject to enough radiation from its parent star, eventually it would be stripped of its gaseous atmosphere, leaving only its rocky core. The problem was that no one knew how long this process would take. It might take the entire age of the universe to happen, and therefore no one could have observed it yet. By combining two surveys they think that they might be able to shed new light on this problem. The first survey is the Kepler mission, which so far has found thousands of exoplanets orbiting other worlds, including super-Earths and sub-Neptune planets. The other survey is the Gaia mission, which provided an essential ingredient to measuring the sizes of planets hosting stars. Combining size and stellar colour allows them to determine the relative ages of the stars. What they discovered was an interesting trend which showed that stars which output higher amounts of starlight and which were considered younger tended to have more sub-Neptune worlds compared to those which were considered older, which tended to have more super-Earths and less sub-Neptune class worlds. They speculate that the link here is that the starlight is stripping the gas away from these planets, leaving behind only the rocky body. And this could happen in as little as one billion years, rather than the entire age of the universe. Now let's take a little step back here. If stars are indeed electrically powered, there is a different relationship that this shows up. Larger, more energetic stars appear to have more sub-Neptune class worlds compared to stars under a more normal load, or even those which are underpowered. So why might this be? We have previously speculated that the larger gas giants might have been captured brown dwarfs, but that maybe the sub-Neptune class worlds were ejected from the star itself. It would therefore make sense that the stars which are under higher electrical stresses would see a greater number of sub-Neptune worlds. But then why would a normally powered star have less sub-Neptune class worlds? Now it is important to realise that their data only shows a correlation, not the actual change taking place. They determine the age of the star using metallicity, temperature and colour, and then choose a cutoff of 1 billion years. And that's really because this is the point at which they see the change, so therefore they assume that that is therefore how long it takes for this process to take place. Now those marked in green are considered younger and those in purple older. We do see a general trend that the older stars seem to be larger at a given temperature compared to the younger variants. In the electric universe stars are born in a z-pinch, and it is a reasonable assumption that these would tend to be born in a higher energy state and it is unlikely that a star would be created in an underpowered state. So it is possible that the reason we see less sub-Neptune class worlds in more normally powered stars is for the same reason the mainstream gives here. Could these sub-Neptune worlds, which are born in a high energetic system, over time have their atmosphere stripped away, meaning that those stars that wander over time or receive less power would by this fact be older and hence the sub-Neptune worlds would have had more time to be stripped away. Another simpler way of looking at this is to consider that the supposed age difference between what they consider younger and older is not that much. So where they are seeing less sub-Neptune planets, these are stars which simply are less stressed and would therefore not have produced sub-Neptunes through ejection. This does however leave the question about why there would be more giant Earths around these types of stars compared to the more stressed stars. Again here we need to be cautious as the only way that they can tell the difference between a sub-Neptune class world and a super-Earth is the effect it has on the star in terms of the dimming of the light. This tells them the size and the time period tells them the approximate radius from the star, 
The redshift then tells them how much wobble this causes on the star. More massive planets will cause a greater wobble on the star. They are not directly observing the planets themselves. Now, when we examined the origin of an expanding Earth, I covered the concept where a gas giant could be stripped of all of its gas, leaving a rocky core. This rocky core would be under an extreme amount of pressure and would therefore need to expand. Could this account for an expansion mechanism? The problem here is that it really would only account for this on some of the worlds and would not explain why we see it on the moons of our outer solar system. Now, returning to the piece I did on the system that was ruled by order and chaos, could this theory explain what we saw there? Now, just a quick recap, they thought that there was a major problem with the order of the density of the system, and that there was a giant Earth after a sub-Neptune class world, followed by another sub-Neptune class world. Now, you would certainly expect the sub-Neptune worlds to be turned into rocky planets from the centre outwards, so the closest to the star first. And we see that in the first few planets, but then we end up with this out of order. It is possible that some sub-Neptune worlds have more gas so take longer to be burnt off compared to others. Or of course it's equally possible that what we are seeing in the relationship does not directly relate to the star stripping the planet of gas, but more to do with the electrical environment of the star itself, and hence the types of world it might have spawned. Buried in this is data that I think could prove useful in trying to understand how planets form around stars. In the EU model planets are ejected, so star systems with planets that are close are likely to be ejected from the star. More distant planets are generally captured and in this capture process it may cause a respacing of the orbits and a deflection of some of the bodies which are closer in. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.